Okay, so we're looking at this problem here. Solve for x and check. So the problem is supposed to have fractions. This was my fancy way of putting fractions. It was underlines, okay? Because uh, it's hard to kind of type fractions in on the computer. But um, we were talking about how when we have an equation with fractions, we can actually get rid of all the fractions by clearing fractions. Okay, so in order to clear fractions, there's two ways to do it, but I think the easiest way is to get a lowest common denominator. So the lowest common denominator. So to find the LCD, we could take the, all the denominators, three, six, nine, and we could find their prime factors. So the three is already just prime, so it's only just three. If I take the six and I make a little factor tree, I can come up with any two numbers that multiply together to give me six. Well, it's just two times three. So I have three times two, and I wrote it in that order for a reason, okay? Even though I said two times three, that it doesn't matter, right? The multiplication, the order, if I go two times three versus three times two, we call that the commutative property of multiplication. You can multiply in any order. Okay, what about nine? If I were to factor nine, give me two factors of nine. The factor tree, just three times three, right? So here I'm gonna put three times, I'm gonna put a three over here. So what I want you to see, to find the lowest common denominator, you could multiply. They all have three in common. Actually, that three that they all have in common, we call the greatest common factor, the GCF, which stands for greatest common factor. Okay. And then... To find the LCD, you're gonna take that three that they have in common and multiply it by the extra two and the extra three. See how those are the extras. So they only get one of the GCF since they all share it times two times three. Now I wish I had drawn a bigger box maybe for that. So the LCD is gonna be three times two, which is six. What's six times three? 18, so the GCF will be 18. If I go through and multiply each fraction here so that they all have a denominator of 18. So now I have to go through and decide, okay, what do I have to multiply the first fraction by in order to have a denominator of 18? Currently it has a denominator of what? Good. And what would I have to do to it if I wanted to create a denominator of 18? Multiply by three. Yes. And I'm actually going to multiply the numerator denominator by the same thing. So I'm going to multiply by two over two. And when I multiply that whole thing in the numerator, what do I get? Would I get four times X, two times X times two? That's an X, not a multiplication, by the way, okay? So that's how we get four X. Now I have my plus in between. What am I gonna multiply the second fraction two thirds by so that I can create an equivalent fraction? What we're doing is we're making equivalent fractions with an LCD, lowest common denominator, of 18. So what number times three gives me 18? So I have to do the same thing in the numerator and the denominator. Two times six gives me, in the numerator, 12, good. What about this last fraction? It currently has a denominator of six. So to make it have an LCD of 18, I'm gonna multiply it by three over three, good. What is three times X? 
3x. So now that the denominators are all 18, we can basically clear the fractions by saying, okay, well, if I were to multiply both sides by 18, because I can do whatever I want so long as I do the same thing to both sides. So if I multiply the whole entire equation, both sides by 18, that's why I'm distributing here. They both get an 18 because I'm multiply. I would have to distribute that. The 18 divided by 18 is one, right? So these are one, one. This is an example of cross cancel, one, one. What's left is that equation in the numerator. 4x plus 12 equals 3x. Now, what could we do here? That's a much easier equation to solve, right? 4x plus 12 equals 3x. So what could we do to solve for x right now? I want to get all my x's. Yeah. So I want to get all the x's on one side. What would you prefer? Do you want to subtract the 3x or the 4x? We can do it either way. Okay, and that's probably because you have a number over here. So you're thinking maybe if I subtract the 4x. So if we take the 4x from both sides, we get 12 equals how many x's? Yes, negative 1x. So I can just put it as negative x. If negative x equals 12, what does positive x equal? What can I do to get x by itself? Yeah, by negative one, right? That's its coefficient, negative one implied. If I do the same thing on both sides, I get x equals, what's 12 divided by negative one? Negative 12. Okay, so that was solving for x. That's our value of x. Now, if we want to see if that answer is correct, we could go ahead and put it back in. That's our check. So I'm going to take my original equation that I have here in black and feel free to come get one. I have a, a handout here. Okay. And I'm going to plug it in. So I have my, to check it, I'm going to go ahead and plug in two times negative 12 over nine plus two over three. And since I don't know if it's equal, I put it in like a T chart here and I take my other equation, which was negative 12 over six. Okay, so I can do all this math and basically I wanna see, do the two sides equal each other? So the first thing I do is order of operations and I go here, okay, that's a big, eh, eh, eh. but I could also cross cancel, right? Nine, does nine and 12, is there a number that goes into nine and 12 evenly? Three, three goes in here three times, three goes in here four times. You see how I cross canceled that? I just reduced that part of the fraction. Now I have two times negative four, which is negative eight over three plus two over three. Could you simplify negative 12 6? Does it reduce? How many times does 6 go into negative 12? Negative 2 times, right? Is that, is that true? 6 goes into 12, positive divided by negative. Now here, what's cool about that cross cancel that I did was I actually have a common denominator. I have to have a common denominator to add. What do these two things add to? negative seven thirds. Wait a second. What happened, you guys? Did I do something wrong? Oh, wait, isn't that negative six thirds? Oh, I thought I heard negative seven. Okay, negative six thirds. I had to pause for a moment. Does negative six thirds reduce? Yes to what? negative two. So the fact that we got negative two on both sides means that the solution, which is x equals negative 12, works. So we solved it correctly. And then that way you can make mistakes along the way and then question yourself and use a calculator and find out. Okay, any questions on that? We just solved a linear equation. This is called solving a linear equation. Solve 
a linear equation, okay? Because it's a linear equation in one variable, x to the first power in the equation is what makes it linear. And there's only one variable. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about that.